What's up, y'all? I'm here with comedian Joelle Johnson. Give it up! <laughs> so if you've ever shopped at a flea market, you've probably seen those piles of old letters and photographs for sale. You may have wondered, like, where do these come from? What happened to their owners? Why are they here? Uh, well, my next guest has those same questions. She's had those and decided to do something about it. She's known as the heirloom hunter. She collects family heirlooms and returns them to the next of kin all free of charge. Say hi to Chelsea, everybody. Yeah. So meet Joyelle. Meet hey, Joyelle. Nice to meet Your you, gorgeous. Amazing. I we know. Both fingernails. Yes, I know, but the nails. glitter I've been watching. I know all, both your feet. I know mine are so basic. Okay, let's move on. Um, <laughs> so wait, this is this is so unique. I mean, what's your process like? So you buy one. Like, how do you buy specifically things you think you have a chance at finding? Obviously. So mm -hmm. I always try and find items with identifying marks, names, dates, locations. The yeah. more the merrier. Um, there, uh, there is a myth that these items just end up at the flea market because of because people throw them out, which is so not the case. Um, most of these items end up at the flea market because of family drama. So for example, someone gets access to an estate and then doesn't give the items to the rest of the family. But basically Wrong. what I do is I just... I put in all names and locations into an online database and I just see what pops up. So sometimes a census record will pop up, sometimes a public family tree where I can uh, message the owner of that public family tree. But it really just depends on each item. But um, one of my favorite returns was actually Valentine's Day cards from around World War II. And what's special about these cards and what was emotional for me about them were um, Honestly, it was, it was just the return. I returned them to the granddaughter of the couple who sent back and forth Valentine's Day cards while the husband was in the Navy. And the granddaughter said to me when she received the cards was, it felt like you brought my grandparents back for those few moments that I was reading the card. Oh my God, she And <laughs> Girl, I got lashes on. <laughs> sorry. Oh my God. It's so I'm sweet. Sorry. But um, wow. it, was one, it was one of my most special returns. And I was weeping, she was weeping. It was just a lot of weeping. <laughs> yeah. She is weeping. Yeah. Hey, do, you, do you have anything in like your, the only thing I have in my family thing, I think for my mom is my grandmother, and it's like vinyl records. And yeah. I think my mom gave them to me, obviously I'm the, the musician in the family. But like, do you have anything in your family that you? Um, I have this Swarovski ring that I got for my 40th birthday for myself, so. <laughs> <laughs> this will be a family So that will heirloom. be a family heirloom. Yes. <laughs> I love it, that is a family heirloom. It will heirloom. not end up in a thrift store. So yeah. we will be passing this on. Yep. <laughs> you are starting it. Yeah. So wait, so this is beautiful work, but it's gotta be pretty emotional, right? Yes. Have you ever showed up and given something to someone and then it didn't go well? Yes, so, but oh, not in the way no. that you would expect. So I found love letters from the 1960s and um, I returned them to a woman who's still alive, the, the would-be recipient, and she had never received the letters. So when I gave them to her, it was her first time reading them. And it was very traumatic for her because that was someone who she was dating and she never received those. She thought he just stopped corresponding with her, but oh, he didn't. No. She thought he ghosted? Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> so it, so yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's first ghosting and so right there. It, yes. it brings up that question, like, could they have ended up together if she did receive the letters yeah. back in the 60s? Um, so that was painful for her. It was painful for me, but it wasn't painful. She was so glad that I did return those yeah. letters, but um, it was more of, or give them to her for the first time. Because imagine the healing that could yeah. come from that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. knowing that you weren't ghosted. Yeah. Like, right, you know? and I think that did yeah. cause, I mean, listen, it provided closure. Yeah. For her. Amen. And I mean, she's remarried now and very happy. But um, wouldn't it be funny if she walked in and she was like, I could have ended up with it. No, wait. <laughs> I'm waiting for her to just walk in right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So, in some ways, if you're following in your father's footsteps because I heard he's a genealogist, was yes, he? That is yeah. correct. That's amazing. So my dad is a genealogist and growing up, so I see him help families all around the world oh, yeah. uh, for free, by the way. And uh, okay, that Downton Abbey? Is Daddy. that Downton Abbey? <laughs> that is Downton Abbey. <laughs> Downton Abbey. <laughs> Yep. The girl knows a castle. Yep. <laughs> I know Downton Abbey very well. Um, but uh, I saw him help families all around the world for free. And I have to admit, growing up, I did not find it cool, especially when I was a yeah, teenager. Yeah, no, we never find cool no. stuff cool when we're young. Of yeah. course. And I do think, though, it did hurt my dad's feelings in a way. But um, as I grew up, I started to become more attached to genealogy. I started enjoying it more. Yeah. It's, it's really fantastic. So one of your most beloved discoveries was letters 
um, there were letters written by a Holocaust survivor. survivor. Yes, yeah. they were. So How intense was that, first of all, just reading it? I was, well, since starting this journey, I have to admit that Holocaust documentation has been my number one priority, getting it off of the market. Unfortunately, people do sell Holocaust documentation either underground or at auction for very high prices. Um, but reading that letter was very emotional for me, especially that return. The letter was basically to say um, it, was, it was the day that um, Ilsa left the camp and she's, the letter was to her sister in England, basically telling her that everyone in her family had died. Mom, dad, two sisters, and her husband. And so, yes, but the story behind this letter and how I got it is actually pretty interesting. Um, there's this vendor that I always use in New York City. Well, not anymore. We'll get to that. Uh, but I, I frequently get love letters from him. And I remember in passing in October, he mentioned that he had Holocaust documentation at home, hundreds of documents that he was going to sell for thousands of dollars. Disgusting. But I knew mm -hmm. I had to get my hands on those items. So I started this strategium to get him to persuade, to persuade him to show me the letters to bring them in. Yeah. And so I found the translation of, of that letter. And um, the second that I found the translation and I knew what it was, I knew I couldn't tell him what it actually was. Because if I did, he either wouldn't have sold me the letter or would have sold it to me for thousands of dollars. So I told a little fib and I just said the letter was about food stamps and could I buy it to give to the family? And so I did, I oh, bought it. But sneaky. Sneaky, but... and. To be honest, I would do it again in a heartbeat. And yeah. I was able to. You're trying to get it to the family. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a moral aspect. I mean, sneaky in a good way. There's good sneaky. I would do it again in a heartbeat if I could. Oh. Well, we actually have Ilsa's great niece, Jill, dialed in right now. So, hi, Jill. Hi. So, Jill, what did you think when you first heard from Chelsea? I was really blown away and amazed by her kindness. And the fact that she would spend her time and energies reaching out to connect me with um, a letter in the actual handwriting of my, my favorite great aunt, who was really more like a grandmother to me growing up because she didn't have any children of her own. Aww. And um, she herself in her youth, they say she looked like the actress Marlene Dietrich. She was blonde and um, blue eyed so she could pass as Aryan. She actually was part of an underground organization in Berlin that was actually protesting the fascists into early into the 1940s. And then when she was captured, she was actually sent on um, a transport train to Auschwitz, which amazingly she jumped off, one of the only people who survived such transports, and went back to Berlin, was hidden underground. And this letter is shortly after liberation. She's writing to her only surviving sister. And as Chelsea said, she's telling them for the first time that their other two sisters, their brother-in-law, their parents, and Ilse's second husband, Gerhardt, had all been, been murdered. And it's just unbelievable that this is the emotion that she must have had to put in this letter to, to send it and on the receiving end mm -hmm. to be the one who, to find out that your family is gone. Yeah, I don't, can, can you imagine like unexpectedly just receiving family letters, like anything like that? Oh yeah, well, my great great grandfather was a part of the slave narratives, so we like he sent you know letters and stuff, and they documented his experience in slavery. Um, so. so you have actually, yeah, mm -hmm. that's hard. Yeah, absolutely. But also a reason to like, I guess, be so thankful for that for the fact that like you get this life right now. You know what I'm saying? Like we absolutely. all get this life right yes. now. Jill, what what does it mean to you and your family to have these letters back? And you know, it's in it's in her words, it's in her handwriting. That's that's pretty amazing. Um, it's really wonderful. And um, the letters themselves, like the one that you you showed, the the first line it translated says, "Through the kindness of our liberators." So that and that really epitomized my great aunt of what she was like. That just this sense of gratitude. She kept up after the war when the tables turned and she was in the U.S. She sent um, needed supplies and money to the people who had had um, hidden her and um, helped them rebuild their lives in post-war Germany. And just to have this memorial that I hope to frame and put in my, room, in my home so that anybody who sees them can see and ask me about it can learn Chelsea's story 
and learn that there are people who do good in the world, that Chelsea is someone who takes her own energy and time and money and efforts and talents and reaches out and connects people like me with a piece of my family that's gone, mm. is I'm forever grateful. And history is so important. So important we, to so we, it. we don't forget it. No, so we, we don't can't forget. It. Never yep. forget. That's why people say never yep. forget. I love that. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Thank you so much, Jill, for sharing.